Here's another example with evaluating inverse trig functions. So here's the inverse cosine function. So we're pretty much just going to do it the exact same way we did the inverse sine function, but we're just going to have different numbers to think about, different intervals to think about, things like that. So before we move on, we want to remember what's the range of the inverse cosine function. The range of the inverse cosine function is this interval from 0 to pi, uh, including the endpoints. Okay, so when we evaluate the inverse cosine function, whatever number we get better be in this interval, because okay? this interval is the range. So when you evaluate the inverse cosine function, all the values you're going to get uh, when you evaluate, you're going to get something in this interval here. Okay? So that's what has to happen uh, just by definition of the range. So we're just going to do it the exact same way we did the inverse sine function, but now we have a different interval to think about. So we ask ourselves, uh, which theta in that interval 0 to pi has cosine theta equal to what? So for part A, we want the inverse cosine of 0. So what we want to ask ourselves is which theta in this interval 0 to pi has cosine of theta equal to 0? And again, it's really just a matter of knowing the unit circle. So if you don't know the unit circle, you can pull one out, check it out, and you'll see that uh, cosine of pi over 2 is 0. And again, there are infinitely many values whose cosine is 0. For example, uh, negative pi over 2, uh, 3 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2, 7 pi over 2, negative 3 pi over 2, negative 27 pi over 2, uh, and so on and so forth. But the only value whose cosine is 0 and who's also in this interval uh, is pi over 2. Because okay? cosine of pi over 2 is 0, and pi over 2 is the only such number in this interval. Okay? So that's our answer, pi over 2. So really, when you evaluate inverse trig functions uh, with the nice numbers without a calculator, it really just comes down to knowing the unit circle and remembering the range of the inverse trig function you're looking at. So inverse cosine of 0 is pi over 2. Uh, because cosine of pi over 2 is 0, and pi over 2 is in the range of inverse cosine. And that's really pretty much all there is to it. It's really not too complicated, it's just kind of a different way of thinking. Uh, you're just thinking about all the trig functions again, but you're just kind of, and, and the unit circle, but you're just kind of going backwards from how we usually do it. Okay, now the inverse cosine of negative 1. Uh, so we ask ourselves the exact same question, which theta in this interval, in the range of the inverse cosine, has cosine of theta equal to negative 1. Okay, and then if we take a look at our unit circle, we see that, okay, in this interval, the only number that has cosine equal to negative 1 is pi. Cosine of pi equals negative 1. Okay, so pi is our answer. Okay, so it's, again, it's really just a matter of knowing the unit circle. That's all there is to it. And of course, remembering the range. And again, there are uh, infinitely many numbers whose cosine is negative 1. There's pi, 3 pi, 5 pi, 7 pi. Uh, negative pi, negative 3 pi, and so on and so forth. But the only number in this interval is pi. Now since this is negative 1, you might be tempted to have a negative answer here. But again, be careful because the range is from 0 to pi, so you're never going to have a negative answer. When you evaluate the inverse cosine function, uh, your answer will never, ever, ever be negative. It's either going to be 0 or something positive uh, all the way up to pi. So remember, your answer has to be somewhere in this interval from 0 to pi. So never anything negative. Okay, okay now uh, inverse cosine of negative root 2 over 2. So it's a uh, different notation, but remember we talked about that in the earlier video where we introduced the inverse cosine function. Uh, arc cos, just another way of saying inverse cosine. So we ask ourselves the exact same question, just with this value instead. So which theta in this interval from 0 to pi has cosine of theta equal to negative root 2 over 2. And again, that's just a nice special number on the unit circle. So we can take a look at the unit circle and see, OK, with negative root 2 over 2, uh, the, number in this, the only number in this interval that has cosine equal to negative root 2 over 2 is going to be uh, 3 pi over 4. Okay, because cosine of 3 pi over 4 equals negative root 2 over 2. But again, there are infinitely many numbers whose cosine is negative root 2 over 2. There's 3 pi over 4, uh, 5 pi over 4, and there's also a negative 3 pi over 4, negative 5 pi over 4, and all the angles that are coterminal with those. Um, but 3 pi over 4 is the only one uh, 
that's, uh, that has cosine equal to negative root 2 over 2 and is in this interval. So again, be very careful about that, um, making sure you stay in the proper interval. And again, we're using the interval 0 to pi because that's the range of the inverse cosine function. So this is uh, 3 pi over 4. Okay, so the inverse cosine of negative root 2 over 2 is 3 pi over 4 because cosine of 3 pi over 4 is negative root 2 over 2 and 3 pi over 4 is inside of this interval. Okay, okay part D, A cos of pi. Remember A cos, that A is short for arc, so this is short for arc cos, which is the exact same thing as inverse cosine. So basically we're just asking ourselves the exact same question, just with pi instead. So inverse cosine of pi. So which theta in 0 to pi has cosine of theta equal to pi. So be careful, this is kind of tricky because we're using pi here. But if you think about it, uh, just like in the last video when we did part D, there's a couple different ways to think about this. So what we can do is ask ourselves this question that we've been asking ourselves, which theta in 0 to pi has cosine of theta equal to pi? Well, there really isn't one, right? So pi, remember pi is about 3, 0.14159-ish, right? So whatever it is, it's uh, greater than 1, right? Strictly greater than 1. But remember, when you evaluate the cosine function, when you evaluate the cosine function, you have to get between negative 1 and 1. Okay, so no matter what theta is, cosine of theta is always between negative 1 and 1. So there is no theta that's going to give you cosine of theta equals pi. It's just never going to happen, okay? Now, you can take the cosine of pi, but don't think about that. That's completely different. Okay, so that's why it might be kind of confusing, because we're throwing this pi in here, and you think about taking the cosine of pi, and you know cosine of pi is negative 1, which actually we did that kind of here, right, in part b. But that's just completely different. It's something totally different. It's not what we're doing here at all. What we're doing is asking ourselves, which number or which angle theta has cosine of theta equal to pi? It's a totally different question. Okay. And the answer is there is no such theta because pi is too big. It's outside of the uh, range of the cosine function. Okay. So when you do the cosine of theta, you have to get between negative 1 and 1, so pi is not possible. So then the answer is uh, DNE, or does not exist, or no solution. Okay. So that's one way of thinking about it. The other way of thinking about it is just like in the other video, uh, or the, the previous video for the inverse sine function, um, if we want to do the arc cosine of pi, well, we can't do that because remember the domain, what's the domain of the inverse cosine function? Well, here's the range of the inverse cosine function at 0 to pi, but the domain of the inverse cosine function is negative 1 to 1, which is the same as the range of the cosine function. So domain of the inverse cosine function, range of the cosine function, same thing, negative 1 to 1. And uh, since pi is outside of the domain of the inverse cosine function, then we just can't evaluate the inverse cosine function there, just by definition of domain. Okay, this number is outside of the domain of this function, so we just can't do this. It does not exist, no solution, that's all there is to it. Okay, so that's it for example 2 um, with evaluating inverse trig functions. And again, it's just a matter of knowing the unit circle and remembering what the range of the inverse trig function is. In this case, it was 0 to pi. And then we just have to ask ourselves this question, which angle theta in this interval has cosine of theta equal to whatever number we're looking at? Okay. So that's example two, other trig functions coming up in the next few videos.